So what I would say is that, you know, okay, the obvious fact is we're in the playoffs. Uh, we would have gotten in the playoffs. We would have backed in the playoffs. LAFC beat Minnesota. Uh, but what I want to say about the team is sometimes I say it in different ways or, you know, different games or different circumstances. But grit, determination, never quit. They always seem to figure out ways how to be competitive. I mean, we don't win all of the games that we play. But they always put the effort in. They never quit. And I couldn't be happier for guys like Christian, who you know has had a rough season. But he comes in and makes a good contribution. Jordan obviously was super excited about the birth of his son. And you saw the celebration there. So I'm happy for him and the whole Morris family. And Eliza, too, and her family. It's a good story. I'm happy for Josh Atencio, you know, because I'm, you know, seeing which one, Josh Obed. Josh comes on the field and delivers in a critical moment. That's one of the reasons why he's on the field, because of his height, because of his athleticism, and he's able to flick the ball in the right spot. Christian reading the, reading the flick. I thought JP, Obed, they all put the work in. So that's a team win. And I'm happy for the group that we were able to put ourselves in the playoffs, not having us just kind of back our way in, because I think that group deserves every accolade, every positivity. You know, there's been a lot of people that have said, well, the Sounders, you know, haven't had a great season. Well, we're in second place. So there you go. All right, we'll open it up to questions. Probably start on this side of the room first. Jose, I saw your hand. And then Mike's coming to you. Uh, coach, that comment about being in second place, people talking about how it doesn't feel that way, is that a byproduct of how high of an expectation you sure. set within yeah. the club and how you set an expectation for your players to also uh, uh, contribute to your, to your efforts? It's absolutely the expectations of this club. Absolutely. And I think the Sounder fans, they're an educated group. They understand when it's a good game, when it's a bad game. But they also have to understand that we don't always play well, but you can't ever fault the player's effort. You can't fault the effort. The players never quit. And that's something I'm very proud of. And so tonight's game, you know, the first half was pretty good. Okay, pretty good. Maybe we should add another goal, maybe, you know, nine shots, whatever. They only had one. Maybe the outcome should have been different in the first half, but it didn't happen. Second half, I thought L.A., whatever Greg said worked, whatever I said didn't. They came out and were better than us, but we found a way to win, and that's what's important. Jeremiah, we'll go your way next. Mike's right there over your left shoulder. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, sort of the perception of this team. I guess the other part of that is it had been almost three months. It had been three months since you'd, you'd won at home. Since July 1st. How, I mean, how, how big of a deal was it just to sort of get that, to put that yeah. stuff to bed? During this unbeaten run of seven games, Jeremiah, there's positivity. Uh, yeah, some of those wins were on the road. So I get it. I understand. And that's part of the frustration with the fans and why maybe the fans don't think we're, you know, playing up to our potential. But the fact of the matter is, is this was a critical game. It sets us up for a critical match against Vancouver because they're on a good run of form. And we'll see. We'll see how our last game of the year at home plays out. But this much I'm going to tell you, the guys are going to be ready. Whoever I put on the field, they're going to bust their butts to try and make sure we have a good outcome. That I, that I can guarantee you. We'll take one more on this side, and then we'll go over to Chris. But down here, first to Maz. Thanks for waiting patiently, Maz. Brian, talking about competition, you, uh, the going back and forth in the starting lineup between Josh and uh, Obed. Obed, yeah. And just how it's playing out and making for a competitive side. And just what you said, doesn't matter who you put out, they're going to give the effort. It makes a team better. What everybody has to understand, it's not an individual competition between certain players. It's competition, yes. It's pro sports, yes. But what it's doing is effectively making the team better. 
because the players are driving, they're playing against each other and training, trying to be the starter. It drives their individual development, which in turn helps them, both of them, when they step on the field. Okay, Chris Egan next. Can you just talk about Jordan and the dad strength we saw tonight? I yeah. mean, uh, obviously his wife did a lot of the work there, but uh, <laughs> to have him on the field and what he did tonight for your team, just uh, talk yeah. about his play. Yeah, look, I, I, Chris, I had some reservations about taking him out. I thought maybe some of the emotions and the tiredness started to creep in. Obviously, it was an emotional time for him the last week. But there's good emotions and positive emotions and you know he's got a son and he's excited so yes you could see it in his play and certainly again the goal celebration you know the goal that he actually scored was was the goal that he actually scored he did score a goal um it was really good i mean he backed away got in front of his defender the snap header it was a great ball by jp but that was a that was a well-crafted uh, and from a technical standpoint, a really good header. We'll come front row over to Nico Moreno next. <clears throat> Just wanted to get your take on your two first substitutions. Uh, you bring in Reed, you bring in Nico. Um, just kind of how did that played out? What was the thought process? Yeah, Albert was coming off an illness. Nico was fresh legs, ready to play. Uh, Leo Chu, you know, was effective in moments in the first half, but I thought Reed could give us a little bit of a uh, boost of energy. I needed Reed to get, you know, use his long legs, his God-given talent of getting up and down the field. I thought we needed a two-way player out there because LA had parts of the game. So I thought both of them came on and, and did a good job. We'll go over to Nico Antion here since we're in the front row, go ahead. Could you talk about Fry's performance and his contribution to the win tonight? Yeah, as always, that's an easy question. Thank you for that. I love talking about Steph Fry. Uh, big saves in critical moments, calm. Uh, we're getting better playing out of the back. We've worked on that. I think that's going to be something, again, during after the Vancouver game, during the break, in the build-up to the playoffs. I think that's one area where we need to do a little bit better job. Sometimes we play a little negative, the ball ends up at Steph's feet, you know, when we should have been playing forward passes, and how do we help Steph? How do we give him options? I think that's one of the areas of, you know, in the team uh, tactics that we got to do better. But he does what he's paid to do, which is keep the ball out of the back of the net. All right, we'll go to Zoom next. I know there are some people still have questions in here. We'll get to you, no worries. Uh, for Zoom, I'm just seeing the one hand. If you have another question on that platform, please go ahead, hit the raise hand function button. For now, Felipe Makeda, please go ahead and ask your question. Come off mute. Felipe, Felipe you're still on mute. If you want to ask your question, please come off. Even I can see that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on. Um, Tim Foss, I think you had a question there. Can you hear me? Um, I can. Felipe, go ahead, please. Sorry, Tim. Yeah, gracias. Thank you, Alex. Um, uh, Coach Brian, me gustaría saber la importancia que tiene Christian Rondán en el equipo. Sabemos que es importante, pero el número de minutos que ha jugado desde su regreso de la lesión, un par de goles, una asistencia, jugador que energiza a sus compañeros, un jugador que corre los 90 minutos. Can I play through this one? Uh, Coach, um, tell me a little bit about the importance of Christian Rodin for this team. Uh, more specifically, you know, the minutes that he's played since the injury, scoring two goals, providing assists, energizing the group. Tell us about that importance for the team. He said it the other day at training, Felipe, I think you were there. It's like he feels like a new player, like it's a new player for the team. I certainly tend to agree. Uh, he does a lot of little things. He does a lot of big things. Uh, you know, he's been a critical part of you know the narrative of what was wrong in the in the middle part of the year. I think we missed his ability to balance the team, the attacking and the defending, and just getting the balance right. So, you know, tonight was 
icing on the cake that he scored the winning goal. Eh, creo que él dijo el otro día que se siente como un, un nuevo jugador. Eh, y yo estoy de acuerdo. Eh, es el tipo de jugador que hace desde las cosas pequeñas hasta las cosas grandes, desde los <coughs> detalles hasta las cosas import más importantes. Y todos los días eh, creo que fue, él fue una, una parte importante de, de la narrativa de cuando estábamos eh, no tan, en la parte de, de la temporada que no estaban tan bien, que estaban malos. Y él trae un equilibrio eh, desde la defensa hasta el ataque, entonces muy importante. He didn't translate icing on the cake. <laughs> Thank you. Well, okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. Take it easy on Bob. He's the best. All right. Uh, thanks for that question, Felipe. Tim, we're going to go your way next. Uh, Douglas Costa's goal, obviously pretty well taken, but outside of that, uh, Jamar and Jackson Reagan particularly limited the opportunities that the Galaxy had. Uh, Billy Sharp has been pretty effective since he came into the league. Similarly, last game, Sam Surridge has been pretty effective since he came in, but the center backs very effectively shut both of those guys down. Uh, what in particular did you see them do well that helped them limit opportunities today? Well, they've been pretty steady all year long. I'm blessed with, you know, good center backs. You got to throw Javi in the mix too because he's chomping at the bit to play. Uh, he's done well for this club. Uh, Billy Sharp is a quality player. I actually enjoyed watching him play. Uh, you know, look, he's an experienced guy, uh, but he certainly is a good pickup for them. Costa, yes, his goal. I thought Costa's play was very good today. Um, so give them some credit. You know, I think they had come back and got points four out of their last seven games, some stat like that. So it wasn't an easy game. But it's not just Yaimar and Jackson and Steph. The expectations are the defending actually starts up front. And so Jordan and Albert and Leo and Christian in the first half, early in the first half, our pressure was good. We were on top of them early. And I think that always helps the back line. If your forwards are pressing effectively, then it makes those guys' job a lot easier. Okay, other hands here. Yeah, Maz, we'll go your way next. Then Diego, we'll come to you. Yeah, Brian. Alex Rodan, uh, early on at the 14, 17 minute mark, his ability to, to help pass the ball out, and then obviously his going up into the offensive end ends up in obviously the throw to the goal. What can you talk about the way he's been playing on the defensive end and then obviously in transition and doing the lower Alex, Alex had a breakout season in 21, I think it was. He's a quality player. You know, again, kudos to my good friend Pete Fewing in Seattle University. He had a good career. Maybe he was playing under the shadow of his brother. There were lots of reasons why he is who he is today. Uh, but Alex is quality. Um, and the throwing was probably the easiest part of his game. Uh, what I liked was, you know, there in the second half, I'm sure you caught it, Maz. Uh, Alex went inside and Christian came outside. And that's a little different wrinkle that those two guys had. And I thought that was effective for us. So overall, a good performance by Alex. Diego. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Felicitaciones por el triunfo. Thank you. Eh, dos preguntas. Eh, Sobre Raúl, Raúl Díaz, Raúl Ruiz Díaz, ¿cuál es su situación física y anímica, considerando que en la última convocatoria a la selección no le fue muy bien? Y eh, la otra pregunta, si bien eh, el equipo ha ganado hoy, eh, ¿se mantiene un poco el tema de eh, ir ganando los partidos y luego una especie de desconcentración? hace que los partidos terminen empatados o perdidos. Eh, ¿A qué cree se debe eso? ¿Es un problema de desconcentración? ¿Es un problema físico? Gracias. Good night, congratulations. Uh, two questions. First, uh, about Raúl Ruiz wow. Díaz. Uh, would you tell us about the physical and motivational state? Uh, in particular, he went to the national team and the performance was not that great. So tell us about that. The second question. 
um, it seems that the, the, uh, we keep seeing this theme of the team uh, going ahead, being in a winning position, but then for some reason end up with ties or losses. Is it a matter of concentration? Is it a matter of physical condition? Tell us a little bit about it. So Raul has a sore back. He's going to be fine. That's the easy question. Uh, the challenging question is yes, because I think I've talked about it up here before. What do we do when we get ahead of teams? You know, we've had a couple of 2-1 score lines or 2 nothing score lines, and, you know, Colorado comes back, makes the game challenging. That's always hard. It's a fair question. We try and work on that. We try and message that. How do you close out games? Through more possession, through better defending, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's something that's hard. Usually what happens is human nature affects you a little bit. And then the other team, your opponent, doesn't want to lose, so they put a little bit more effort into the game. But we do need to do a better job of making sure we close out games because that's important if you want to win a championship. Uh, con respecto a Raúl, eh, una pregunta sencilla, eh, tuvo un problema en la espalda, pero va a quedar mejor, entonces eso ya está. Eh, la segunda pregunta, sí, como hablé aquí de otras veces, eh, sí fuimos adelante un par de veces con eh, 1-0, 2-0, por ejemplo, el partido con Colorado que se niveló después, y tenemos que seguir trabajando, hablando, y intentando cerrar los partidos, puede ser por medio de la posesión del balón, puede ser por mejor defensa, y también hay algunos aspectos que son humanos y otros también aspectos de que el otro equipo también pone un esfuerzo más grande al final de un partido, intentando volver a un partido. Entonces tenemos que mejorar y porque cerrar partidos es importante para alguien, para un equipo que quiere ganar torneos. All right, final questions. We'll do the last one right here. Mike is coming to you. Kind of a lighthearted question to wrap us up. Who are you most looking forward to facing off potentially in the play playoffs, other than the obvious Portland, uh, and sort of give some reasons why? Uh, let's wait until we see how the Western Conference shakes up. Uh, I don't know if I have any favorites or non-favorites who we're going to play. Obviously, if it was a best of three series against Portland, that would be interesting because it's the first time we have the new playoff format. Uh, that might get a little heated but let's just wait and see.